my lord, uh, the second petitioner is represented. The first respondent is also represented here in court. The third respondent is present in court. Other parties are absent. Lord, my name is Laimu Margandude, National Chairman, APC, presenting the first respondent. First respondent. The fourth respondent is represented in court, my lord. Other parties have said. The, the, the list of counsel is, uh, they are a bit lengthy. So maybe we can just announce the appearances. But uh, the, 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 the case is here. We we'll record them after. MSN, Peter Afoba SN, and then members of the outer bar, because three of them started with number eight, GKA will be precious Chendo. Finally, we come to Biora. Together we appear for the petitioners adults. He couldn't be accommodated today. Yes, first respondent. If it pleases my lords, I am Sir Stephen Adehi. I appear with my learned friends of the Ilaba, T.M. Inwa, S.A.M. Al Hassan A. Umar, SAM. Tulayman Olawali Ibrahim, SAM. And our friends of the Altava appearing with us are Nasara H. Auta, Esquire. Aminu Sadawki, Esquire. N. A. Atta, Esquire. Susan A. Murosi, Esquire. Damu Aguru. Esquire and Martins F. Epa. We all appear for the first respondent. Thank you very much, my lord. With profound humility to my noble lords, my name is A. A. Malik. My humble appearance is for the second and third respondent. One of my learned brothers of the inner bar appearing with me are Babatunde Ogala, SAN, Dr. Remy Olatugura, SAN, and Mutalubi Ojo Adebayo, SAN. I also have our colleagues on the outer bar, namely my lord Emmanuel Uwadoka, Esquire. Inka Ajeni Fuja Esquire, Akintola 
Makinde Esquire, Julius Shola Esquire, and last but not the least, Taiwo Lakanu Esquire. Pray for me, Yes. Good morning, my lords. I am Chief Dr. Charles O.S.G. Edosawa. I make a humble appearance for the first respondent. The Pacers are Chief Adede Akintola S.A.N. Chief Afonabi Fashano S.A.N. Sam Onomorisha S.A.N. Sulmono Moore S.A.N. Abdul Muhammad Rafindadi S.A.N. Along with our learned friends of the Autobahn, also here with us. And their Mosaya Kupola Esquire. Alain Waju, Olivia Gerura Akishala Esquire. Alaji Oyu Esquire. Is Waila Muhammad Ibrahim. Thank you very much. We're all here for the first time. With respect, my lords, my name is Andrew Malawi. I know that I appear for the petitioner, and my learned friend of the outer bar, J. O. Oloto, appears with me. Yes, my lord. We have to do some changes in court here. It was pulling for us. Okay. Oops. Good night, my lord. Yes. May it please, my lord. I am Sir Stephen Adeli. I appear with my learned friends of the inner bar. E.M. Inua. S.A.M. Al Hassan A. Umar, SAN, Tuleiman Olawale Ibrahim, SAN, and our friends of the outer bar, of, of the inner, uh, outer bar, Nasara H. Auta, Esquire, Aminu Sadawki, Esquire, M. E. Atta, Esquire, Susan Imoesi, Esquire, Damiu Aguru, Esquire, and Martins F. Epa, Esquire. We all appear for the first respondent. Yes, very yes. grateful, my lords. The point is wonderful. Thank you, Your Lordships. I'm Chief Dr. Charles Uwansi Negosa. I make a humble appearance for the second respondent. And let it friends. Chief Adeni Akintola S.A.L. Chief Afanabi Fasano S.A.L. Sam Olukorisha Esquire S.A.L. Solomon Umar Esquire S.A.L. Abdul 
Muhammad Rafin Dadi Essaya. Omosaya Opola Esquire Essaya. Sorry, my Lord. That's, that's my prayer for you, my Lord. My prayer for you. That's what I. Olaya Waju Akishola Esquire. Olaji on Esquire. And Miss Waila Mohammed Ibrahim. We all hear sounds for the second respondent. Thank you. Yes. With profound humility to my noble lords, my name is A. A. Malik. My humble appearance, my lords, is for the third and fourth respondent. My learned brothers of the Yinaba, Babatunde Ogala, SAN. Remy, Dr. Remy Olatugura, SAN. And Muta Lubi Ojo Atebaya, SAN. All are there with me. And together we have our colleagues appearing with us, namely Emmanuel Uwadoka, Esquire. Yinka Ajeti Fuja. Ajeni Fuja, sorry, my name. Esquire. Akintola Makinde Esquire, Julius Ishola Esquire, Taiwo Lakonum Esquire, and if it pleases my noble lords, may I respectfully add one last name. I only one. Sorry, my name. I only one. Most good for my lord. My lord, our parents for the third and fourth respondent. Thank you, my lord. Most respectfully, my lord. Yes. My name is Gabriel M. Ishaw. Why didn't you submit your own? Who is here? Submit the list. Yes. My learned friends who appear with me are Ofure, Rosella Iere. Let's see. Is it on that name? Is it on the list? Yes, my lord. It's number six on our list. Who are you, man? Number seven, PT or a berry. Last but not the least, number eight, Edward a Java Esquire. But collectively, we respectfully appear for the fifth response. May it please my lord, I am Sir Stephen Adehi. I appear with my learned friends, Senior Counsel, E.M. Inua, S.A.N., Al Hassan A. Umar, S.A.N., Suleiman Olawale Ibrahim, S.A.N., and my Appearing with us are our colleagues, Nasara H. Auta Esquire, Aminu Sadauki Esquire, M. A. Atta Esquire, Susan E. Imoisi Esquire, Daniel Aguru Esquire, and Martins F. Epa Esquire. We appear for the first respondent. Read this, my lords. Okay. With profound humility to our noble lords, my name is A. A. Malik. I appear, my lord, for the second respondent. Leonard Brothers of the Silk, Abatunde of Gala, S.A.N. Remy, Dr. Remy Olatubura. SAN and Muta Lubi Ujo Adebayo SAN all appear with me. However, other colleagues, Manuel Uwadoka Esquire, Inka Ajeni Fuja Esquire, Akintola Makinde Esquire, Julius Shola Esquire, and last but not the least, I will lock on 
expire. Together, my Lord, we appear for the second respondent. Pray for the Lord. My Lord, for the third respondent, I am Charles Wensi Edoson. Yes. My learned friends, Chief Adeni Akintala SAL, Chief Afolabi Fashanu SAL, Sam Ologo Risha Esquire SAL, Solomon Umar Esquire SAL. Abdul Muhammad Rafindad Esquire, S.A.M. God and my little friends of the outer Mr. Amosa Popola, Mr. Olai Waju Akinshola, Mr. Bolaji Onu, and Miss. Wila Muhammad, right? They all would miss us for the third respect. Most graceful sir. Well, uh, I deliver the judgment, but uh, know that we all know the rules concerning consolidated uh, matters. Each of the petitions so consolidated will maintain their individual identities, so we shall treat them as such. We shall begin with petition number four. Remember that uh, during the preparing session, several motions were, were filed. So we shall begin with the consideration of this application. So we proceed to the uh, main petition. So in, the, in this petition, that petition number three and uh, number four, sorry, um, a petition of sharing a live people's movement participated in the presidential election conducted by the first respondent on the 26th of February 2023 by sponsoring a candidate, that's uh, OJ, Princess Chichi, agreed by the declaration and return of the election, has filed its petition filed on the 20th day of May 2023, read this court at part, paragraph 31 of the petition to grant it the following reliefs. One, that it may be determined that A, the third respondent was not qualified to contest as the presidential candidate of the second respondent as at 26th day of February 2023, when the presidential election was conducted by the first respondent in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having violated the provisions of section 142 sub 1 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. B, a declaration that the return of the third respondent by the first, uh, first respondent of the present elect, what the federal part of Nigeria is not void and with no legal effect whatsoever. The third respondent having violated the provisions of section 142 sub 1 of the constitution of the federal part of Nigeria 99 as amended, and the fourth respondent having violated the provision of section 35 of the Electoral Act 2022. See, the fourth respondent was not qualified to contest, contest as the vice presidential candidate of the second respondent as at 26 February 2023, when the presidential election was conducted by the federal respondent in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having violated the provisions of Section 35 of the Electoral Act 2022. D. 
The declaration of the time of status funded by the first respondent on the first March 2023 as the present elector of Federal Republic of Nigeria is invalid by reason of non compliance with the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 and the Electoral Act 2022. A declaration that, having regard to the joint ticket principle enshrined in Section 142.1 of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, the withdrawal of the sixth respondent as the vice presidential candidate of the second respondent by operation of law amounted to automatic withdrawal and inv invalidation of the candidate of the third respondent as the presidential candidate of the second respondent for the presidential election conducted by the first respondent on the 26th day of February 2023. A declaration that arising from the invalidity of the third respondent nomination the first respondent ought not to have included the name or the abbreviation of the name or the logo of the second respondent in the ballot papers and other election materials used by the first respondent for the conduct of the presidential election held on 26th day of February 2023. The first respondent was not qualified to contest as the vice president candidate of the second respondent as of 26th February 2023, when the first when the presidential election was conducted by the first respondent in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having violated the provisions of Section 35 of the Electoral Act 2022, an order nullifying and voiding all the votes scored by the third respondent in the presidential election conducted by the first respondent on 26 February 2023, in view of his non qualification as a candidate of the second respondent. Upon the grant of prayer for above, an order nullifying and or setting aside the time of declaration of third respondent as winner of the election conducted by the first respondent for the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the 26th day of February 2023, same having been made in violation of the provisions of section 1421 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. 1999 and section 35 of the Electoral Act 2022. And finally, upon the ground of prayers 5 and 6 above, and in the absence of the third respondent's participation in the presidential election held on 26 February 2023, pursuant to section 136 sub 2 of the Electoral Act, an order declaring the candidate with the next highest number of votes as the winner of the election. The grounds of the petition are set out in paragraph 15 of the petition is as follows. Your petitioner states that the ground upon which this petition is presented is that the third respondent was at the time of the election not qualified to contest the election. The respondents who are duly served the petition and also responded by filing their replies. The first respondent reply to the petition was filed on 9th of April, uh, April 2023. The second respondent reply to the petition was also filed on 9th of April 2023, while, while that of the third and fourth respondent was filed on 13th of April 2023. A fifth respondent also filed a reply to the petition. On the 16th of April 2023, the, petition then, the petitioner then filed a reply to the respective replies of the respondents to the petition. The respondent filed a number of motions, all of which are in the competence of the petition. These motions were duly heard during the hearing session and ruling results. Uh, the first motion was filed by the first respondent. After you can hear it in this motion, was filed on the on the sixth of May, wherein he sought the following reliefs. One, an order striking up paragraphs two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen of the petition reply filed on twentieth day of April twenty twenty three in response in response to the first respondent's reply. Two, an order striking out paragraphs 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 of the petition reply filed on 20th of April 2023 in response to the first respondent's reply. And, and for such further order of orders as the Honorable Tribunal shall give fit to make in the circumstance. We were asked to note that the grounds for the petition or for the application are as follows. They have been reproduced in the uh, ruling. I need not read them out. So the motion is a bit 
supported by an affidavit of four paragraphs and a written address. The petitioner respondent then responded by filing counter affidavit of seven paragraphs on 13th of May 2023. Same was accompanied by written address in opposition to the application. That, uh, the arguments of counsel in respect of that uh, application have been considered here in the ruling. A similar application was also filed by the second respondent on the 8th of May 2023, wherein the second respondent prayed this court to grant the following reliefs. One, an order of the Honorable Tribunal granting leave to the second respondent applicant to file and argue this application before or outside the pre-hearing session in this petition. It should be noted that this court is sitting as a court of appeal, not as a tribunal. So, an order of this honorable court striking out paragraphs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17, so 1, 2, 4, and 5. Paragraph 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 the, of, of Part D of the petitioner's reply and of the entire petitioner's reply to the second respondent's reply to the petition or being an unnecessary repetition and or introduction of being facts unrelated to the second respondent's reply to the petition. 3. An order of the owner court striking out in whole or part thereof of the witness statements on oath filed together with the petitioner's reply to the petition for being irregular and in flagrant non-compliance with the relevant provisions of the first schedule to the Electoral Act 2022. The grounds for that application have also been summarized in this uh, judgment. <laughs> Same thing with the submissions of counsel. The third and fourth respondents also filed a motion on the 13th of May 2023, seeking the following reliefs. One, an order striking out the entire reply filed by the petitioner on 20th April 2023 together with the accompanying witness statements on both, list of witnesses to be relied on, and the list of additional documents. Two, further, or in the alternative to prayer one above, an order striking out paragraphs 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, up to 21, of the petition reply under the heading, petition reply to the third respondent's reply to the motion on 20th April 2023 to the applicant's reply to the petition and for such further order of orders as this honorable court may think it make in the circumstances. The grounds have also been referred to in this uh, ruling. We have also considered the submissions of counsel. Now it is apparent that the first respondent's motion filed on the 6th of May 2023 the second respondent motion filed on the 8th of April 2023 and the third and fourth respondent motion filed on 13th May 2023 are all aimed at having certain paragraphs of the petition replies to the respective replies of the respondent's replies to the petition struck out. The common ground in all the applications is that the affirmance and the petitioner's reply have introduced new facts, new issues, facts and or grounds to the petition. Furthermore, that some of the affirmance are rehashed or repetition of the variance in the petition file. That those are variance in the petition replies to find paragraph 16, sub, sub paragraph 1a and b of the first schedule to the Electoral Act 2022. The same paragraph to the Electoral Act stipulates that.
always see the reading from that condition, you will be seen that it is meant to explain the purpose of petitioners and flight to the response flight. It creates answers to the dissent for any fact which might be specifically created and which have the effect of destroying the respondent because or make it not maintainable. The bottom line is that the petitioner is permitted by the first schedule to the electoral act petition to file the reply while the respondent to the petition has in his reply raising issues of fact in the dissent, which fact the petitioner has not dealt with the petition. However, in doing so, the petition reply shall not introduce new facts, grounds, and prior attempting to amend or attack the content of the petition. Outside the case of APC and PDP, that petition supply. It is therefore clear that paragraph 61 of the social media to the electoral act does not permit the petitioner in his reply to introduce or bring in any new issue or fact which ought to have been raised in the petition itself. In other words, the petitioner cannot, in the guise of a reply, the respondent replied and produced a new issue of fact which was never raised in this petition nor raised by the respondent. To do that will amount to amending or adding to the petition and also taking the respondent by surprise because at that stage the respondent will not be in a position to act to start new issue or fact. It will therefore breach the respondent's fundamental right to set life. Therefore, the petitioner is not permitted to declare or rehash his abundance in the petition in such a way that it will amount to an amendment or a structuring or a reconstruction of the petition. In the case of Dingeli and Ramapo, the petition supply. With the state of the law as stated above, at the back of my mind, I have only worked to scrutinize the pleadings in the respondent's respective reply to the petition. These are the specific paragraphs of the petition replies complaint of. I start with the first respondent complaint. The first respondent complaint is against paragraph 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 15 of the petition reply. I have carefully studied those paragraphs of the petition reply. It is my view that paragraphs 1, 6, 7, 8, 12, and 14 of the petition reply to the first respondent reply are competent as they are proper replies to the first respondent's reply. However, paragraphs 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11, 13, and 15 of the said petitioner's reply are not competent, as they are either rehashed or facts pleaded in the petition, or they introduce and or add new facts to the petition. Being incompetent, they are hereby struck up. The complaint of the second respondent is against paragraphs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 8, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, sub 1, 2, 3, and, and, and 4. 4 and 5, sorry, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 24, and 25, part B of the petition reply to the second respondent's reply to the petition. I have carefully considered both paragraphs in the light of paragraph 16, 1A and B of the first schedule to the electoral act 2022. It is my certain, it is certain law that where a respondent raises in his reply to the petition, fresh or new issues, it will, it will be necessary for the petitioner to file a reply to the respondent's reply to the petition. At that stage, the petitioner may also file further written statements on oath of witnesses. He may wish to call in rebuttal of the new issues raised by the respondent. This is because any failure by the petitioner to reply or answer to those new issues Read by the respondent will be deemed that the petitioner has considered to that to such phrase for new issues. The cases of Idris and AMTP, Dingadi and Wamako were also cited. That being so, the written statements on oath of witnesses filed along with the petitioner reply to the uh, respondent reply in proof of par uh, paragraphs struck out are uh, accordingly struck out. In my view, paragraphs 1, 2, the paragraph listed of the petition reply to the second respondent reply to the petition are either rehashed for paragraph or, or paragraphs in the petition or introduced or added new facts to the petition. They are incompetent and accordingly struck out. I am also of the view that paragraphs 1, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20 of the petition reply to the third and fourth respondent reply to the petition are uh, the hash of the violence in the petition, they are in my view incompetent and accordingly stuck up.
Uh, this this other motion filed by defense respondent on the 7th of May 2023, seeking the following relief. One, an order of this uh, honorable court writing out the petition for being incompetent and an abuse of court process. The grounds of uh, filing the motion have been produced. The motion supported by six paragraphs of fidelity deposed to by one. If Mwadike, the litigation secretary in the law firm of Dipko and Mahmoud, relates to the first respondent applicant, it is also accompanied by a written address filed in support of the motion. In response, the petitioner filed a counter affidavit on the 14th of May 2023, consisting of paragraphs, of seven paragraphs, deposed by one Carlo Kenneth of Korea. Again, secretary in the law firm of Mrs. O. M. Atoyo B. S. N. and partners. The written address was also filed along with the counter affidavit. I consider the arguments of counsel on this uh, motion. The third and fourth respondents. Also filed a similar motion on 12 of May 2023. There in the third and fourth respondent prayed for an order of this honorable court striking out and or dismissing this petition for being incompetent, fundamentally defective, and vesting no jurisdiction on the, this honorable court to adjudicate, adjudicate their own. The grounds for the application have been listed. This motion several grounds were raised. Now it is apparent that the sole ground of this petition is based on the qualification of the second respondent. The issue of qualification the issue of qualification or disqualification of the candidate to contest an election for the office of President of Nigeria is a constitutional one. That is why it is stipulated in subsection in section. 134 subsection 1 A of the Electoral Act 2022 that an election may be questioned on any of the following grounds. A. A person whose election is questioned was at the time of the election not qualified to contest the election. The qualifications and or disqualifications of a candidate to contest, uh, to contest an election for the office of president, as uh, stipulated in section 131 and 137 of the constitution of the federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended. While the qualifications are inserted in section 131, the disqualifications are ingrained in section 137, subsection 18J of the constitution. It is apparent, therefore, that the issue of qualification of a candidate to contest an election could be a ground in an election petition. So, it may also ground the pre-election matter, where such issue of qualification or disqualification of candidate arises from the primary election of the party by virtue of section 285, subsection 14 of the constitution. Where the issue of qualification or disqualification arises from before the election, if it is an election or a pre-election matter, and an action on that issue must be instituted by to section 285, subsection 11 and 14, of the constitution. It should be noted that upon a quick and careful perusal of the pleadings and in the petition, 
the issue of disqualification of the Celsius responder rests solely on the issue of the alleged invalid nomination of his running mate with the third responder. The issue of invalid nomination is captured by paragraphs 18, 19, 20, and 21 of the petition. For proper understanding of the uh, facts pleaded, those paragraphs have been produced. The second issue uh, um, of that uh, issue is captured in paragraph 22, 23, 24, and 25, and 26 of the petition. Uh, uh, considering the facts pleaded above, it is clear that the claim of disqualification for non qualification. On, uh, disqualification, non qualification with that respondent is centered solely on the invalid or double nomination of the fourth respondent. However, it is a certain law that the issue of nomination of a candidate at an election is a pre election matter. Therefore, the issue of qualification or disqualification can only be ventilated on the grounds enumerated in section 131 or 137 of the constitution. That is why section 8 or subsection 3. Of the electoral acts 2022 stipulates that a political party shall not impose nomination qualification or disqualification criteria, measures, or conditions on, an, on any aspirant or candidate for any election in its constitution, guidelines, or rules for nomination of candidates for election, except as prescribed under section 65. 66, 106, 107, 131, 137, 177, and 185 of the Constitution. 187. It therefore means that the conditions of qualification or disqualification are prescribed by, uh, under section 131 and 137 in case of person contesting for office or president. That means that where it is alleged in an election petition that a person is who was not qualified to contest election to the office of president of Nigeria as stipulated in section 134, subsection 1A of the Electoral Act 2020. It is sections 131 and 137 of the Constitution of Nigeria that are applicable. In the cases of PDP and ANIC, Kachi and PDP, Ucha and Unwe, and Captain Idris, Chalawada and others, Yahya Bello and others, all citations apply. That's why election has been conducted and the result declared. That election cannot be questioned on grounds of qualification under safe under sections 131 and 137 of the constitution in the case of a presidential election. This postulation is supported by section 134 of section 3 of the electoral, of, uh, electoral act, where it is stipulated that with respect to subsection 1A, a person is deemed to be qualified for an elected of, elective office and his election shall not be questioned on grounds of qualification if, with respect to the particular election in question, he meets the applicable requirements of section 65, 106, 137, or 177 of the constitution, and he is not, as may be applicable, in breach of section 66, 107, 137, or 182 of the constitution. As stated earlier, the applicable provisions are sections 131 and 137 of the constitution. It's clear from the plenitude of the pleadings in this petition that the facts surrounding the petition's claim of disqualification or non-qualification of the third and, uh, third and fourth respondent, the same on double and invalid nomination of the first respondent. I have pointed out earlier in the course of this ruling that the issue of qualification or disqualification of a candidate at an election is strictly the requirement of the constitution. That it was held in the case of Al Hassan. And, and, other, and another versus Ishaku and others that did not supply a court by virtue of the provisions of section 138 sub 1a of the electoral act the tribunal's power to decide whether a person is qualified to contest an election is restricted to establishing the requirements of section 177 and 182 of the uh, constitution against the adverse party and election tribunal has no jurisdiction to inquire into the primaries of the political party close of court it is apparent, therefore, that issues of nomination or sponsorship of candidates by political parties have come under pre-election matter and should be disputed and determined before the uh, conduct of the election. Ishim Kasi and another uh, was Yari, 
others, Ella and others was Abu. That being so, a grant of election petition concerning the election of persons duly qualified to contest such election as required by the constitution cannot be sustained while it is predicated on nomination or sponsorship of such candidate. Therefore, a petitioner who relies on non qualification of his opponent to nullify the election must bring the facts of such non qualification within the ambit of section 131 and 137 of the 1999 constitution. I have noted that the petitioner respondent sought to tie his complaint of non qualification to section 142 1 of the 1999 constitution. That provision took place as follows. I quote, in any election to which the foregoing provision of this part of this chapter relate, a candidate for an election to the office of president shall not be deemed to be validly nominated unless he nominates another candidate as his associate from the same political party who is running for the office of president, who is to occupy the office of vice president, and that candidate shall be deemed to have been duly elected to the office of vice president if the candidate for election to the office of president who nominated him as such associate is duly elected as president in accordance with the provisions of aforesaid. And of the view that the above cited provision of the constitution does not create additional qualification or disqualifications for a candidate contesting for the office of president of Nigeria. Furthermore, section 142 of the 1919 constitution, read along with section 141 of the said constitution, create the office of president and vice president. Section 142.1 is a specific provision donating power to the president to nominate a person as his associate to occupy the office of, uh, of the president. That is why section, section 2 of section 142 mandates that the requirements of qualification and disqualification attaching to the occupier of seat of president also applies to the holder of the office of vice president. It is therefore my view that section 142, subsection 1 of the constitution does not introduce the issue of nomination or sponsorship of vice president so as to enlarge the scope of qualifications or disqualifications applicable to the seat of president. There cannot therefore be a disqualifying factor of a candidate for the office of president outside those specified in section 131 and 137 of the constitution. It can be safely, it can safely be said that those programs have sufficiently and conclusively over the field until there is an amendment to the constitution. In the uh, cases of IG, IDR, and AD Federation, also PDP and ANI Supra. As a follow-up to my finding, uh, findings above, I find the, the, uh, um, uh, upon the firm view that the issue of nomination of sponsor of the respondent being a election matter ought to have been ventilated by the petitioner before the federal high court, as this court has no jurisdiction to deal with the matter. Even if this court has such jurisdiction, the course of action being an election matter is that to by virtue of section 285 sub 9 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 amended. Having found as above, it is my view that the two motions filed by the first respondent and third and fourth respondent on 7 May 2023 and 12 May 2023 respectively have no merit. Apparently, I find that the petition is also, they have made it. Accordingly, I find that the petition is liable to be struck out for being incompetent. By a motion on notice filed on the 8th of May 2023, the second respondent, Rokapu Khan, sought the following relief. An order of this honorable tribunal granting leave to the second respondent, applicant, to bring and argue this application before from outside or during the pre hearing session. Two, an order of this honorable tribunal striking out grounds one and two contained in paragraph 16 of the petition for being incompetent. Three, an order of the honorable tribunal striking out paragraph 17, 18, 19, 20, to 20, 29 of the petition, which are predicated on the incompetent grounds one and two in paragraph 16 of the petition for being an abuse of court process. And what four, an order of this uh, tribunal striking out this one. To seven of the petition petition for being incongruous, illogical, and ungrantable, and five, an order of the honorable tribunal dismissing or otherwise striking out the petition for one of the decision and on the ground that the petition does not disclose any reasonable cause of action. Here's the ground for the I'll come.
consider the uh, arguments of uh, counsel which I have summarized in the bullet, it will be seen We've seen that this application is premised on several grounds. The first is that the grounds of the petition are incompetent. This is premised on the erroneous argument of the civil respondent from Appleton that the grounds for the petition are stated in paragraphs 16 of the petition. The careful perusal of the petition which disclose that there is only one ground for the petition and is stated in paragraph 15 of the petition as follows that your petition states that the ground upon which this petition is presented is that the third respondent was at the time of the election not qualified to contest the election. The affirmance in paragraph 16 has unequivocal caption dealing with the facts of the petition. This ground for the objection to the competence of this petition, therefore, large substance is accordingly discountenance. The second ground for the objection is that the petition is an abuse of court process. It is premised on the fact that the petitioner for the respondent that in earlier instituted an action before the Federal High Court in suit number FHC for ABG for sales for 1015-2022 between Allied People's Movement and INIC and 12 others on the same subject matter as in this petition against the first, second, third, and fourth respondent in this petition and others. It was, it was however, deposed in paragraph 3M of the count affidavit filed by the petition in opposition to this application. That the matter was not determined on the merit by the trial court, who referred the matter to the court of King for interpretation. That in any case, the matter had since lapsed in 180 days for termination by, by law, being a pre election matter. It is tried law that abuse of court or judicial process simply means the use of a court process malafide or in bad faith to the annulment of the opponent. One variety of critique is the institution of multifarious actions between the same parties with regard to the same subject matter and same issue in the same or another court. A quick look at the originating summons in suit number FHC APJ CS1 2022 will show that the same was instituted in the Federal High Court of Abuja on 27th of July 2022. Brief being a pre election matter, ought to have been determined within 180 days as required by section 285, subsection 10 of the 1999 constitution. It therefore means that it lapsed by January 2023, about a month the election in question was conducted. This petition having been inspected on the 20th, 20th of March 2023, when suit number FHC was no more alive, does not qualify as an abuse of court process. This ground for this objection is also on the on the on, on whether this petition is called by the doctrine of testable, it was argued that the issues raised in the, this petition have been firmly resolved by the court of appeal in appeal number CS from ABJ from CS from 08 from 2022. Issue testable arises when the issue has been decided upon finality by a court of competent jurisdiction. In other words, once an issue has been raised and distinctly determined between the parties, another party can be allowed to fight that issue all over again. The same issue cannot be raised by other party again in the same or subsequent proceedings except in special circumstances. For issue acceptable to apply, the following conditions must be satisfied. A. The question must have started the same question must have been decided in both proceedings. The decision which creates the principle must be final and the parties to the judicial decision or the previous to the proceedings with the issue is must be the same. To determine whether the above three elements exist, the court will closely examine the reasons for the judgment and other relevant facts that were actually issued in the proceeding. In the cases of Oyekola and others was Amudu, OSPM Limited vs. Nigel Company Nigeria Limited and Tasuki Retired vs. Federal Power Nigeria Station Supply. I have studied the case sought to be relied on as each testable in this case. It is apparent that the parties in that case are not the same as in the instant petition. The issues, though the same, were not resolved to finality in the previous case. 
The action was struck up on ground of lack of local standard by the lower court, which this court affirmed on appeal. Thus, the rejection on, the, on, on the, that ground is also discontinued. On whether the question is started back, I had heard in the earlier motion filed by the first respondent on 7th May 2023 and third uh, and fourth respondent's motion filed on 12th May 2023, which were taken together. This petition, which is premised on the nomination of sponsorship of the fourth respondent, is a pre election matter. That being a pre election matter, it ought to have been instituted and ventilated by the petitioner before the Federal High Court within 14 days from the date of recurrence of the event. Or action complaint of that that not having been done, the course of action in this position stands barred by virtue of section 2859 of the 1919 constitution of the federal part of Nigeria as amended. On the issue of local standing, I have also heard in the previous motions 517523 and 12523 that issues of nomination or sponsorship were funded by political parties who an election come under pre election matters. Stated that the issue of nomination of candidates by substitution is purely a pre election matter. The only person with the local standing to challenge the nomination is an aspirant who participated in the process of such nomination. In other words, apart from an aspirant who took part in the primary election, no other person is authorized to challenge such nomination by a political party or an election. That process of challenging the nomination is sanctioned by Section 84, Subsection 14 of the Electoral Act 22 and 285, Section 14 of the Constitution. Fish in Cafe and another versus Abdul, Abdul Aziz Ayari and uh, Al Hassan Amada and Ishaku. It therefore follows that the course of action in this petition, which is rooted in the nomination of sponsor of the fourth respondent, is a pre election matter. Being a pre election matter, the petition hearing has the petitioner hearing has no local standing to challenge or question side nomination or sponsorship of the fourth respondent by the second respondent. Thus, in Titus Democratic Party, PDP, an independent national electoral commission and others, and reported decision of this uh, of, this, of the Supreme Court, live up on 26th day of May 2023, in SC of CV of 501 of I had the matter of reported, but I, I, I have not been able to avail myself of the report. Then at the Supreme Court, held at page 71, at follow, uh, the third one, lines 1 to 16, the other as follows. Court, the provision does not make the filing of pre election matters by political parties an all commerce affair. It is not the purpose of the provision that the floodgate of pre election litigation be open to political parties. Who will hide under it, challenge the action or inaction of rival political parties under the guise of challenging a decision or activities of panic? The application of Section 285, Section 14C of the Constitution does not extend to a political party working into the affairs of another. The position of the law has always been that no political party can challenge the nomination of the candidate of another political party, no matter how pained or disgruntled. The political party is with the way and manner another political party is conducting or has conducted its affairs concerning its nomination of its candidates for any position. It must keep man and remain an onlooker, for it lacks the local standing against such nomination or close of court. It is clear, therefore, that a political party such as the petition is here in only has the local standing to file a pre election matter when the situation affects it or its candidate. By virtue section 285, section 14C of the 1999 Constitution. That being so, as in the instant petition, where the grounds of the petition is rooted on the nomination or sponsorship of the candidate of another political party, this petition, petitioner will have no local standing to institute the action, be it in the Federal High Court or an election tribunal. For that reason, it is my view that the course of action of this petition being on the nomination or sponsorship of the third and fourth respondent. By the second respondent applicant, the petition is incompetent for lack of local standing when the petition includes the action. Also liable to start up for being incompetent. The second, the second respondent applicant also contended that the petition is not properly constituted as the candidate sponsored by the petitioner 
has not been joined as co petitioner in the petition. The short answer to that is that section 133, subsection 1D of the Electoral Act 22 entitles the petition as a political party to institute an election petition. If the applicant has not referred out to any provision of the Electoral Act or any authority that mandates the political party to file an election petition only when his candidate has been joined as a co petitioner. It is true that proper for the candidate of the party to be so joined, but there is no law that compels the political party to join his candidate in the petition. After all, the purpose of that gender is so that the candidate can be bound by the, any judgment or order of the court or tribunal, but any non gender will not invalidate. This is particularly so when section 133, subsection 1 of the Electoral Act articulates by the court. An election petition may, may be presented by, by one or more of the following persons. A. The candidate in an election, or B. A political party which participated in the election. By the use of the disjunctive word for, it means that an election petition may be filed by the candidate alone, or the political party alone, or both them. The objection on this ground is also discontinued. Uh, another motion filed on the 15th of May 2023, the Chief Respondent Das Kabir Masari read this court to grant him the following reliefs. One, an order of this court dismissing this petition in its entirety for one of his reasons. Two, an order striking out the name of the Chief Respondent applicant from this petition for non disclosure of any reasonable course of action against him. And first, other order orders are this honorable court may deem fit to make in the circumstances. The grounds for the application have been It is also considered the permission of counsel. Now, section 133. Section 133 of the Electoral of Defense Persons who are necessary parties in an election petition. Generally, the necessary respondents in an election petition are the persons whose election or return is complained of and the electoral body that conducted the election. This is section 133, subsection 2 and 3 of the Electoral Act 22. Those are what are termed statutory respondents. It should be remembered that. Election petitions are sui generis. As, as sui generis and this procedure is strictly regulated by statute. That's why a person does not fall within the category of statutory respondents. They are not necessarily parties election petition. Uh, see the cases of Abbey and Mimra, Buhari and Yusuf, ATC and TDP. That's in Waziri versus Bedan. The Supreme Court held a court. From the above, I have no difficulty in going along with the submission of the respective counsel for the respondent. The section 137 sub 2 and 3 of the letter of 2020 has no room for the joinder of the state respondent who neither won the election nor perform any role as electoral officer or agent of the third responder in the election petition, challenging the result of such an election. And even no relief was claimed against the, fifth, the same fifth responder, and indeed, he had nothing to gain or lose in the up petition of the close of court. Indeed, a policy reading of the facts of this petition does not disclose any complaint against the fifth responder. The only fact that relates to the fifth responder relevant to the petition is the act of withdrawal of his candidacy as the running mate of the third respondent. That is an act that occurred within the prohibition period, therefore cannot amount to any act done by the state of the as a respondent at the election. It cannot therefore ground any complaint by the petitioner against the state respondent in an election petition. It may be relevant in a pre-election matter, but not in an election petition. It is therefore my finding that there is no any claim on the state respondent. Otherwise, the relief sought in the petition will not in any way affect the civil respondent as he did not participate in the petition either as a candidate or agent of the civil respondent. No declaration was made in his favor by the civil respondent. In that respect, I hold that the objection of the civil respondent in this round uh, has merit.
finally I ordered that the name of the Jesus Brendan cut out this petition. These are the rulings of the people of the petition number four. I will now go to the uh, uh, main petition itself. So after the pre-hearing session, hearing, uh, pre-hearing session, hearing on the petition opened and closed. On the 21st of June 2023, the petitioner called one witness and closed his case. None of the respondents called any witness, attended convictions from the bar, and the petition was adjourned, adopted or written addresses. Parties then filed and served written addresses, as directed by this court, and same were adopted on the 14th of July 2023. The matter was then uh, adjourned for judgment. The first respondent's written address was filed on the 30th of June 2023, wherein four issues were raised for termination as follows. One, whether considering the facts of the petition and evidence laid thereon, the petitioner had the local standing to question the nomination of the first respondent as a ground of challenging the qualification and return of the third respondent as the winner of the presidential election 26 February 2023. Two, whether having regard to the facts pleaded and evidence laid thereon, vis a vis the provision of section 1 at 4 sub section 3 of the electoral act 2022, and the issue of validity of the nomination of the four respondent as the vice president candidate of second respondent, validity raised as a ground before this honorable court, question or challenge the qualification and return of the third respondent as the winner of the presidential election 26 February 2023. Number three, if the answer to note 2 is in the affirmative, whether having a gap to the facts pleaded, the nomination of the first respondent as the vice president candidate of the second respondent is good, as to render the third respondent not qualified until the presidential election of 26 January 2023. Or whether considering the relief sought as per the petition approves no utilitarian benefit to the petitioner, petition not an abuse of court process. Well, to save time, I call the other respondents file briefs and raise issues. These issues have been uh, used in this judgment, including the issues raised by the petitioner. Now it is apparent from the avowals in the petition, the oral and documentary evidence, and the submissions of counsel that this petition is grounded on the disqualification of the third respondent who have contested the present election of 26 February 2023. This is evident in paragraph 15 of the petition, there, uh, wherein the petitioner pleaded that I read it earlier. This is further explained as emanating from the non qualification of the first respondent who have contested the election as the vice president candidate. It is specifically pleaded in paragraph 17 of the petition as follows. Your petition states that the fourth respondent was not qualified to contest, jointly contest with the third respondent for the presidential election held on 26 February 2023, having, having been purported to nominated by the second respondent as its candidate for more than one office. The specific reasons for questioning the qualification of that respondent have been pleaded in paragraph 21 and 2 of the petition as follows. Those uh, paragraphs have been reproduced. If you get the judgment, you will see there. So, a combined reading of paragraph 15, 16, and 17 of, of the petition, open with the particular thereof, so clearly that the petition is premised on non qualification of the third uh, respondent. I find it necessary to state that the grounds for questioning the return at an election are stipulated in section 135 of section 1 of the Electoral Act. That has been earlier. For the purpose of this petition, it 
is ground is the ground C plane in section one type four one A that is relevant. In other words, the election of the third and fourth respondent as president and vice president is questioned on the ground that they are not qualified to have contested the state presidential election. I consider paragraphs 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, and 28 as relevant one for the third nation of the petition. Which paragraphs have been used this judgment? In response, the first respondent, that's INE, filed a reply to the petition while it was abiding in paragraph 14, 15, and 16. Of the first respondent replied to the petition as follows, which has also been refused. Second respondent also filed a second respondent reply to the petition, also abide in their own abundance in paragraph 16, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 25, 29, which have been produced again. So from the totality of the pleadings in the petition and the replies of the respondent, what appears from the complaint of the petition is that the fourth respondent was still a candidate of the second respondent who Borno's central in the district was nominated and did accept to be the vice president candidate of the second respondent. That this act violated the provision of section 35 of the electoral act 2022 as it amounted to his double nomination. That in the circumstances, his nomination as his nomination as an associate of the second respondent for the present election is void. That the result is that the third respondent was disqualified from contesting the election because he did not have a validly nominated running mate at the time of the election. The petitioner relied on section 131 and 142 of the 1999 constitution for his postulation. Section 131 and 142-1 of the constitution of federal government of Nigeria as amended stipulated as stipulated as follows. A person shall be qualified for election to the office of president if A. He is a citizen of Nigeria by birth. B. He has attained the age of 40 years. B. He is a member of a political party and is sponsored by that political party. And D. He has been educated up to at least one certificate level for his equivalent. 142.1. In any election to which the uh, foregoing provision of this part of this chapter date, a candidate for an election to the office of president will not be deemed to be validly nominated unless he nominates another candidate as his associate from the same political party for his running, run, for his running mate for the office of president, who is to occupy the office of vice president, and that candidate shall be deemed to have been duly elected to the office of vice president if the candidate for election to the office of president who nominated him as second associate is duly elected as president in accordance with the provision of the same. The general principles of interpretation of the constitution, which is the supreme law of the land, is that mere technical rules of interpretation of that are to some extent be avoided in a way as not to defeat the principles of government. That's why the words used are clear and unambiguous. A literal interpretation should be applied. In the interpretation, therefore, the rules of the constitution are to be accorded holistic interpretation so as to avoid ambiguity and arrive at the true intention of the legislature. The court must limit itself to the words used in the constitution without resort to any external aid or materials. In the cases of Stani and Federal President Federal Government of Nigeria, Amadi and Aini, and, and Aji and PDP and others. Thus, in PK, years ago, Nguyen, Honorable and uh, Honorable Doctor Okuku, Adol, Peter Said, and others, the Supreme Court observed that the court, the principle of concept of the constitution, to the effect that the constitution is a living document, not just a statute, providing a framework for the governance of the country, not only for the present, but for the generations yet and born. It was held that in construing the constitution, and, and due regard must not be paid to the to merely technical rules because in doing so, the objects of the position as well as the intention of the framers of the position are frustrated. 
courts have always been encouraged to adopt a broad and liberal spirit in interpreting the problem of the constitution while constantly bearing in mind the object which that provision were made as close of court. That being so, while the constitution has stipulated the qualifications to be attained by a person contesting or seeking to contest for any elective office created by the constitution, the courts cannot create or import into the constitution any other qualifying or disqualifying factor. This has been the position of the Supreme Court and duty followed, dutifully followed by this court. It has therefore been held that qualification or disqualification of candidates to contest the election is exclusively determined within the context or scope of the constitution and that nothing can be added to it. In other words, the constitution being the grown norm, period, any other law, including the Electoral Act. Therefore, where the constitution has qualified a person or candidate to contest an election, no other law except the constitution itself can disqualify him. If petitioner in this case has premised his complaint of non qualification or disqualification of the third and fourth respondent as the president or vice presidential candidate of the second respondent on the issue of invalid nomination of the fourth respondent, the fourth respondent was still the senatorial candidate of the second respondent for the Borno Central Senatorial District allows himself to be nominated as the vice presidential candidate of the second respondent for the same election. Our rulings earlier delivered and the motions and preview objection, we have ruled that the ruled that the petition grounded solely on the issue of invalid nomination or improper nomination is not a cognizable ground of qualification under the constitution. In other words, the claim in the petition that the third respondent was not qualified to contest the present election because he nominated an association whose nomination was invalid does not flow from any ground of disqualification of a candidate to the office of president as stipulated in section 137 uh, and 137 of the 1999 In the cases of Palewa and Moazu and uh, Paleke and Ani Azu versus Yorea and in Shinkafi versus Yari, the Supreme Court held that the Supreme Court has listed in section 1 182, uh, uh, very exhaustively, all the issues that can qualify a person from contesting the office of a governor, governor of a state. From the record of this court, the facts have not disclosed any evidence to show that the first respondent was not qualified to contest elections into the office of governor of Zampara State. It is my view that once a country sponsored by his political party has Satisfied the problems, that's why the problem set out in section one, some sound of constitution, and is not qualified under section one, it is of section one, thereof, he is qualified to start election to the office of governor of the state. No other law can qualify him. This uh, uh, authority can apply with tabis to section 1831 and 137 of the electoral act. It has not been contended by the petitioner that either the third or fourth respondent is trammelled by the provisions of section 131 or 137 of the 1999 constitution. The complaint of the petitioner rooted on nomination and special of third and fourth respondent will find accommodation in a pre election dispute with the petitioner cannot even pursue not being a member of the second respondent. This is section 1 of section 84, subsection 14 of the electoral act 2022 and 285 14 of the constitution. While I am temp tempted to put an end to this petition at this stage, but realizing that this court is not the final court on the matter, I am concerned to look at the merits of the petition. As pointed out earlier in the course of this judgment, the complaint of the petitioner in this petition is that the third respondent was at the time of the presidential election held on 25th, January 2022, not qualified to contest the election. This is because According to the petitioner, the fourth respondent was not qualified to run on a joint ticket with him, that's that respondent, as the fourth respondent nomination was invalid for double nomination with valid section 55 of the Electoral Act 2022. As stated earlier, the petition contended that the fourth respondent was a candidate of the second respondent for the Borno Central Central District when the third respondent nominated him as a vice presidential candidate 
on the 14th July 2022. In other words, at the time before the president was nominated, he, he accepted, he had accepted nomination as the vice president candidate for the civil respondent, who was still a validly nominated control candidate of the second respondent for Borno Central Central District. The petitioner then contended that the second respondent had earlier submitted the name of the third respondent together with that of the first, first respondent, added as his presidential and vice president candidate for the 26th February 2020 election. However, that before the date of the election, the first respondent, the sixth respondent withdrew his candidature as the running name of the third respondent on the 24th June 2023, and the name of the fourth respondent was then submitted to any that first respondent on the 15th July 2022. That the second respondent did not conduct any fresh primary election for the purpose of picking another running name for the third respondent after the withdrawal of the fifth respondent. The respondent Considered that the full respondent was at initial a central candidate of the second respondent of Borno Central Central District. However, that on the 6th July 2022, the respondent via a letter dated the same day notified his political party that the second respondent of his withdrawal from the central candidate. That upon receipt of the fourth respondent letter, the second respondent immediately notif notified Annie and which notification letter was received on the 13th July 2022. That the same letter also notified the first respondent of his intention to conduct a fresh primary election for the replacement of the first respondent following his withdrawal as a central candidate. That it was until 14th July 2022 that the first respondent was nominated as the third respondent associate for the presidential election of 25th February 2023. The first respondent notice of withdrawal as a candidate is in evidence as Exhibit TA2, while the notice of withdrawal and letter of voluntary withdrawal of the respondent are in, in evidence as Exhibit TA3 and TA4, respectively. It will appear that the petitioner is the view that the fourth respondent was still the central candidate of the second respondent as at the 14th of July 2022, when he died, the fourth respondent was nominated as the vice president candidate of the second respondent. However, the respondents contended the issue of alleged double nomination of the first respondent has been determined finally by the Supreme Court in the People's Democratic Party, PDP versus Annie, that in the circumstances the said judgment, the Supreme Court constitutes a scopian arena in Qatar, and binding on the parties is in this position. Now, for a judgment to constitute issue establishing uh, the conditions I had earlier stated in the ruling, so the three elements must be present and coexist for a plea of estimable parent in Qatar to apply. In the cases of Ito and Ekte and others, Osho Boja plus Amida and others, and Alexandra and others versus Lone Star Drilling Company Limited, all citations apply. It is obvious that the judgment sought to be relied on for the plea of estimable is that of the Supreme Court, the highest and final court in this country. There is no doubt that the decision was final and the issue that was done by the Supreme Court is the same as in the present petition. Which, whether the fourth respondent brings section 35 of the letter look up but, uh, by allowing himself to be nominated in more than one constituency. The petitioner has however, however argued that the issue decided by the Supreme Court was merely on the local standing of the PDP to question the nomination of the fourth respondent, the candidate of the APC, the Supreme Political Party. That may well be so. But it is clear from the judgment that it is one that the Supreme Court pronounced on the substantive issue of double nomination. So, Joro JSC, who delivered the lead judgment, declined to exercise the powers of the Supreme Court under Section 22 of the Supreme Court Act to pronounce on the merit of the case. The other law laws of the Supreme Court proceeded to do so. It is certain law that, um, that a contributory or concurrent judgment has equal weight as the lead judgment. It is part of the lead judgment and therefore has the same force and binding effect. The mere fact that a concurring or contributed judgment contains what is not in the lead judgment will not whittle down binding effect. As in Olu Elba and others versus Abu Rahim, my Lord Fadi JSC said, of course, the concurring judgment has equal weight with O as a lead judgment. A concurring judgment complements. It defies and asks for the lead judgment when the justice, when the 
justice act if certain fact aspects which the writer of the lead judgment did not remember to deal with. Now, so far as the concurrent judgment performs same for all the above functions, it has equal force with or as the lead judgment, and so far as the principles of prior decisions are concerned. Now, it is apparent that the parties in Exhibit X1, PDP and ANI, and other SOPRA are not the same as in the present petition. The earlier decision, though, involved the first, second, and third, the second and fourth responder. The present petition has, was no, petitioner was not a party in that case. That, that is why it was argued by the petitioner here in that case. X1 had not operated as, as to stop it from litigating the issue of government nomination of the fourth responder. The respondents have responded, responded that the judgment in PDP and Arnis is the case one, the judgment in them as opposed to the judgment in personal. In law, a judgment in personal is the judgment against persons who are parties or privies to the particular suit of proceeding alone, which is referred to as judgment in the parties. It is a judgment binding on the parties to the action alone. A judgment in them, on the other hand, is a judgment that determines the status of a person who was seen as distinct from the particular interest of a party to the litigation. It is referred to as judgment contramundum, binding on the whole world. It is therefore binding not only on the parties to the district, but even non parties. Therefore, once the type of status of a person who was seen has been pronounced upon by a court of competent decision, no person is permitted to assert the contrary of what that court has, court has decided. The Black's Law Dictionary, 11th edition at page 1008, Eric Shola was a the Anati Petrochemical Limited and EFCC, then Lady Jordi and others was a Guntai and others, a Christian supplier. It is no doubt, it is no doubt that the judgment matter in PPP and ANIC others is S1 was in respect of the alleged government nomination of the first respondent, but the vice president candidate of the second respondent um, and the point in the 26 February 2026 election. That is the same issue raised in this petition as grounding the disqualification of the part and both of the and this petition. Pronouncing on this issue in this case, I was not in the concrete judgment. My Lord Okoro JSC, who presided on the panel of the Supreme Court, came as follows I quote. There is no doubt that the fourth respondent was at the stage nominated as a candidate representing Borno Central Central District. But upon being rejected, he would pair with the third respondent as vice presidential candidate of second respondent, all progressive Congress. It is in the 26th February 2023 election. He would choose his candidate for the Senate before taking up the position of vice presidential candidate, which means in the record attest to this fact. These are APC 1, APC 2, which were made on the 6th and 10th of July 2022, respectively. Those of course. After considering those documents, the lawship concluded at page 7 of the control judgment that oh, it is clear, crystal clear, that the two exhibits alluded to above before the respondent did it needful by resigning his position of senior candidate for Borno Central Central District till 6 July 2022, before being nominated by the respondent to run alongside him as vice presidential candidate for all for the Congress. So, I don't recall going on to the after section section type one of the electoral act held at page eight of his judgment at the court. The above provision of the electoral act 2022 was duly complied with by the respondent. My well considered opinion that as at the 6th of July 2020, having withdrawn nomination and personally served sent on the second respondent of the withdrawal and of nomination of the 6th July 22. 2022, the respondent was no longer a candidate for the Borno Central Central District election, and his subsequent nomination as vice president candidate of the second respondent for the presidential election was not multiple nomination, as there was no longer a nomination for the first respondent since his withdrawal on the 6th of July 2022. I have also cited the regular issue of worship against JS. So, I have endeavored to quote extensively the dicta of the law laws of the Supreme Court in PDP and INEC Supra in order to show that the issue of double or even multiple nomination of the fourth respondent as the central candidate 
în vârstă de 10 ani de pe secundă, când le permisit să fie oare până pe de ani de când a fost acel analitic. În ceea ce mi-e îndemn, ea fost valinii pentru face acest petition și în fapt, ea a fost luat în discord. Din the judgment of the final court of the land, of this land, din un court, no person is permitted to again raise and litigate on it in any other action or proceeding. It is therefore settled and remains settled that this petition which questions the qualification and seeks to disqualify the third and fourth respondent from contesting and occupying the seat of president and vice president of Nigeria on ground of double or multiple nomination of the first respondent and vice president and the second respondent on ground of double or multiple nomination of the first respondent has no substance. I only wish to add that section 35 of the Electoral Act is targeted at the candidate and not the political act. That is why it uses the terms candidate and normally allows himself to be nominated by more than one political party or more than one political That's to prove that the candidate normally allows himself to be so nominated both the intent and actual acts of nomination, that is a means rare and after serious of the act prohibited but proved the stipulation in the section being a general provision. In the instant case, neither the intent nor the fact of the first respondent who allows himself to be so nominated is established. That's why my lordship of whom it gets on the future judgment exhibit H1 held as follows the court. By section 31 of the Electoral Act, the first respondent Shetima was obliged to submit a notice of withdrawal in writing to his party, which he did. And then his party is to deliver that notice to the Commission not later than 90 days to the election. In view of the above stated position of the law on this issue and the fact of, facts of this case, there exists no animus or display of intention by the fourth respondent to stand as the nominated candidate of the second respondent for the vice presidential position and also the senator representing Borno Central District in the general election of 2023. There cannot be any other interpretation in the circumstances unless there is clear intention to knowingly stand as a candidate for two elected posts in the election cycle. Jim JLC also contributed as follows. Oh, the manifest intention to relinquish the earlier nomination to pay for, for the nomination of another person to replace him as the party central candidate cannot be overlooked or disregarded. To simply isolate the assumed or purported short lived coexistence of the two nominations for treatment as multiple nominations without regard to the obvious intention of the first respondent not to be the party standard in elections in two consequences against the legislative intent of Section 35 of the Electoral Act 2020. The sequence of the occurrence of the events not what determines the existence of no multiple nominations. It is the intention, design, or purpose of all two or more nominations as candidates for election that shows that the person so nominated knowingly did so. The second respondent did not intend that the first respondent could be its candidate for Borno Central Central election and his vice presidential candidate for the present election. The first respondent did not understand or know that she was so she was so nominated. The word knowing in section 35 of the Electoral Act must be interpreted broadly to include all its literal meanings. Barton's legal service. Fourth edition by William C. Barton at page 356 is defined to include advisedly, deliberately, designedly, intentionally, learnedly, contently, purposely, absolutely purposely, with knowledge, etc. It is clear to me, therefore, that from the oral and documentary evidence adduced by the parties and this petition, the intention and fact of knowingly allowing themselves to be nominated more than one constituency has alleged that the petition against the first respondent has not been established. In other words, both the administrator and after use of the act prohibited by section 35 of the Electoral Act 2022 are not established. One other aspect alleged by the petitioner on his claim of invalid nomination the third and fourth respondent is that the second respondent did not comply with section 33 of the electoral act in the nomination of the first respondent of vice presidential candidate. That after the withdrawal of the first respondent, the second respondent should have conducted a free primary election within 14 days 
the purpose of nominating a new vice presidential candidate. Now, section 33 of the Electoral Act implies that the political party shall not be allowed to change to substitute the standard whose name has been submitted under section 29 of this Act, except in the case of death or withdrawal by a candidate, provided that in the case of such withdrawal or death of a candidate, the political party affected shall, within 14 days of the occurrence of the event, hold a fresh primary election to produce and submit a fresh candidate commission for the election concern. The interpretation of this provision does not, in my view, cause any difficulty as to require the application to any technical rule of construction. Therefore, a literal interpretation will suffice. It therefore means that when a political party has submitted the name of a candidate person to the 29 of the electoral act, it cannot be allowed to substitute or change that candidate except in the event of death or withdrawal of that candidate. While the proviso that the political party affected is enjoined to conduct a fresh primary election for the purpose of producing a new or fresh candidate to submit to the Electoral Commission. The grounds of the petitioner here is that a chief respondent will his nomination as vice well presidential candidate of the second respondent, but the second respondent did not conduct another primary election for the purpose of producing a new vice presidential candidate within the 14 days prescribed by Section 30 of the Electoral Act. It should be remembered that by Section 142, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution, a presidential candidate for election to the office of president has the sole discretion, authority, or power of, or, or power of nominating his associate, who shall run with him in the election as vice president. The choice or nomination of vice presidential candidate is not the product of any primary election. Therefore, in my view, the requirement to conduct a free primary election does not apply to the nomination of the vice presidential candidate. That's my Lord of DJC. I left it at this point in his mind as follows. The fourth respondent was not required to buy any nomination form. He was the second respondent, APC candidate, at the election into the office of Senate representing Borno Central Central District. But before the election was called, he was nominated as the third respondent associate, who is to occupy the office of vice president. The fourth respondent did not buy a nomination form for the state office. And most importantly, it did not contest any primary election in order to match as APC's vice president candidate. The petitioner in paragraph 28.2 of, of his petition had avoided and also contended in the final address that there was a gap of about three weeks between the period the first respondent expressed his intention to withdraw and his actual withdrawal of purported nomination, thereby validated the nomination, nomination of that respondent because the candidate of that respondent had lapsed and was no longer in a position constitutionally in a position constitutionally to nominate a, a nominate. This contention of the is how you have There is nothing in the constitution which robs a presidential candidate of his right to nominate his associate, which shall be his nominate for the office of president. There is also nothing that invalidates the nomination of a new associate by a presidential candidate as his running mate after the withdrawal of his previous associate. So long as the nomination of the new associate was submitted to the first respondent 90 days before the election as mandated by Section 31 of the Electoral Act 2022. This contention of the petitioner is therefore discontinued. It is therefore my view that, uh, that the position of a person as a vice presidential candidate not being subject to a private election Provision of section 33 of the letter of the do not apply. That not I hereby call that the that not I hereby call that the petitioner failed to prove the long ground of the petition to the effect that the third and fourth respondent were not qualified to contest the election held on 26th February 2023 for the reason of his nomination. Having resolved the sole issue of this petition, I gave the petitioner this question. Can't be devoid of any merit.